Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between peak compression and RMS compression. So if you've ever looked at your compressor, you might have two different options. One option might be to have that compressor run as a peak compressor, and the other might be to have it run as an RMS compressor. In this video, we'll talk about what that means and how those two different options make your compressor behave differently and some of the different instances in which one might be better than the other. Now, before we get started, if you're somebody who's interested in recording and mixing music in your home studio, then be sure to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. Over there, you can get a free EQ cheat sheet, a free compression cheat sheet, and a free vocal recording guide. And I think all three will really help you to kickstart your home studio mixes. So peak compression is probably the version that we're most used to. A signal comes along, it overshoots the threshold, and the compressor turns it down. So with the compressor, you set the threshold at a certain point and you say anything that peaks above this point, I want you to turn it down. That's how peak compression works. Now RMS compression works a little bit differently. RMS stands for root mean squared. And RMS compression responds to the average level of a signal rather than the peak level. So what that means is the compressor is only gonna turn the signal down if the average level of the signal would go above the threshold for a certain period of time. So when you're using an RMS compression, you can actually find that some peaks will go through uncompressed if the average level of the signal wouldn't be above the threshold for a certain period. Now, if your compressor allows you to choose between peak mode or RMS mode, it will usually give you a button to toggle between the two modes. But there are also some compressors which let you dial the setting in. So in that instance, what you would be doing is you would be dialing in the time period over which the level changes should be measured. In that instance, a very short time period would represent peak compression, and then a longer time period would represent RMS compression. So the shorter time period means that it's just taking that momentary peak and using that to base its decision on whether or not it should turn the signal down. And if you have a longer time period, you're going into root mean squared mode where it's going to turn the signal down only if the average level over that time period would be above the threshold. Okay, so when to use peak and when to use RMS? Well, for most of us, 99% of the time, we're probably using peak compression. A lot of compressors don't even give you the option to use RMS compression. And I would say that certainly with instruments like drums, I prefer peak compression. I don't want any of those sharp transients from the kick or the snare or the toms or any other part of the kit passing through uncompressed. But having said that, you might like to try RMS compression on something like vocals or any other sustained sound where the levels go up or down a little bit more gradually than they do with drums. And it's definitely worth experimenting with because an RMS compressor, because it's responding to an average level change, it can be a little bit more of a natural or transparent compression sound. So it definitely has its place, but the trade-off is that some peaks may pass through the compressor without being compressed. So I hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you. Thank you very, very much for watching. Don't forget to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free downloads for those three free guides. And I'll see you next time.